Okay, hello, and first of all, I'm so sorry this is so late. I didn't realize how involved a Draw My Life video was until I got into it, and I realized it's a lot harder than just drawing stick figures and narrating it. I got sick, and I wasn't able to narrate it right away. Anyway, long story short, here it is, long overdue, Draw My Life. everyone and welcome to Draw My Life by yours truly, Shannon Scott. Wait, Chano? Ch really? Really? Misspell my own name. Okay, well, off to a great start. Let me fix that really quick. Okay, there we go. All right, moving on. So I was born in the good old U.S. of A. in the state of Montana, in a small city, or I guess more accurately, outside of a small city named Great Falls, which, in spite of its name, was really not all that great. Although, they did have this really good pizza place called Howard's Pizza that had really amazing thin crust, so, you know, there was that. I had a pretty standard family situation growing up, or maybe not standard by today's measures. I had a dad and a mom who are still married, and I had two sisters, one older and one younger. And then there I was, right in the middle, awkward with crazy hair. They were a pretty good family to grow up with. Um, sorry I drew you with potato bodies, guys. Montana was a very machismo place to grow up. I grew up working on a ranch where most people were pretty rough and tough. We did all the usual ranch stuff like picking hay bales from the field and riding horses and four-wheelers and branding cattle. And while I really did not enjoy that kind of work, it gave me a really strong work ethic, so I'm happy about that. One thing that was really rough about growing up in a place like that was that all the guys were pretty rough on me. I think they saw my softer personality as a weakness and I got picked on an awful lot. Words like pussy and faggot were things I heard pretty much on a daily basis. One day an older guy even beat me up and tried throwing me onto a wood burning stove because he thought I was gay. Anyway, it really didn't take me very long to realize that there was a side of myself that was not safe to share. I learned it was better to just stay quiet and try to blend in. So I kept my feminine side closeted, quite literally, for my entire childhood. I remember sneaking into my mom's or my sister's closet and dressing up, and it felt so wonderful. The person that I would see in the mirror made sense to me. But there was a problem. You see, I was raised Catholic and I went to a Catholic school and while I'm so grateful for the wonderful education I received there, I was taught that I was evil for feeling the way that I did and that I wasn't worthy of going to heaven. All of this once combined with the bullying I was receiving outside of school really had a negative impact on my self-worth and my self-esteem. And after a while, I really began to believe that I was worthless. So I went even deeper into denial and deeper into the closet and I started to act like all the guys around me. I would dress like them and I would act like them. I played sports. I even used the same kind of language they did. Sometimes that language was hurtful to people, people who were different, people like me. But it kept me from getting picked on, so I kept acting that way to blend in all through high school. And as high school started to near an end, I knew I wanted to go to college, but we really didn't have the money to send me, so I decided to join the military. And a couple weeks after graduation, I got on a plane and I left for basic training, off to San Antonio, Texas. 
I was very hopeful that this experience would break me of my feminine feelings. I was thinking, oh yeah, all right, okay, gonna go get tough. I remember I would even pray every night and I asked not to feel like a girl any longer. But no matter how hard I tried and how much I prayed, the feelings never went away. On the bright side, some really great things came from being in the military. I developed a great deal of discipline and I got to travel all over the world. And since I'm feeling nice today, I'm not going to make you watch me attempt to draw a map of the earth. I'll just use editing magic. Ta-da! <laughs> so, as I was saying, I traveled all over while I was in the military. I volunteered for every mission that our unit was assigned to so I could get out of Montana and experience what the world had to offer. Let's see, I've been to Texas, which you already know about. My first overseas deployment was to Saudi Arabia in 2002. Then a couple years later, I went to Iraq and I participated in Operation Iraqi Freedom. And then in 2006, I went to Kunsan, South Korea, and then back to Iraq again because the war was still going on. I got to go on a lot of shorter trips too to really fun places, places like Canada and Mexico and Arizona and Hawaii and Alaska and Florida and Oregon and Washington. I even got to spend three weeks in Italy, which was pretty sweet. I was in the military for a little over 11 years, and I really did my very best to serve our country. When I got out, I was pretty highly decorated. This is a flag that was flown over Iraq in an F-16 during a combat mission. And here are the ribbons that I was awarded, and here are my medals that I received, one of which is the Achievement Medal which is awarded to members of the United States Armed Forces who distinguish themselves by outstanding meritorious service. Pretty proud of that one. Here is my Honor Guard rope and my patch. If you don't know, the Honor Guard is a volunteer program that provides services to the community, like military honors for veterans at their funeral. If you've ever seen the military people draping a flag over a coffin or firing a rifle salute, you've seen the Honor Guard. I feel like I should say at this point that I'm really not sure if what we did in Iraq was right or if we were there for the right reasons. I don't know if you or I will ever have that answer. I don't think we will. But what I do know is that war is a terrible thing and that it should be an absolute last resort. I really hope that we can all have a reprieve from the violence. When I wasn't overseas, I was back home working hard. I would work 10 hours a day and then I would go to night classes for five hours so that I could get my bachelor's degree. And after many long nights, I graduated. And life was going pretty well for me at this point. I was able to build a brand new home and life was comfortable. I even met a wonderful girl named Ange and she and I fell in love. But during all this time, I always had my secret about wanting to be a girl. And as much as I tried to deny it, one day Ange found some pictures of me as a woman. Needless to say, she did not take it well, but she loved me and she tried to understand as best she could what being transgender was. She read every book she could get her hands on, but as hard as she tried, she was still a heterosexual woman, and she needed to be with a man, which we both knew I wasn't. So eventually, she had to end things. This was an incredibly painful time for both of us. This was definitely the darkest period of my life. I was so upset over losing Ange and thinking that God hated me and knowing that I would lose my job and my friends and my family if I showed anyone else the truth. I even hated myself for being the reason that Ange had to go. So I began to drink almost every day to try to numb the pain of reality. I would drink excessively and act out in really unhealthy ways to try to feel validated or like I was worth something. 
It was during that time of my life that I considered hurting myself. I was very lucky to have a friend named Tim that I could talk to. He would listen to me and give me a shoulder to cry on and hugs whenever I needed them. I really don't know if I would still be around if it wasn't for Tim. Thanks, Tim. Then one day, I got a wake-up call. I went to the doctor and he told me that I had been exposed to HIV, but that my body hadn't contracted the virus. I was so scared, I didn't even know that that was possible. And after lots of testing and seeing specialists, I was relieved to find out that I didn't actually have HIV. It was at this point in my life that I knew I had to turn things around or I would be dead soon. So I went and I joined a 12-step program where I met my sponsor, Rich. At the same time, I also got a really great therapist who specialized in transgender folks, and her name was Anne. And with the help of these two amazing people, I was able to become emotionally and mentally strong. And I knew I could face the truth. So that's what I did. I accepted who I truly was, and I began taking steps to transform my life. I started hormone replacement therapy and laser hair removal, and I started to apply for jobs because I knew I couldn't transition in the military. And I applied a lot. And I got rejected a lot. And a lot. It took me two years of trying, but one day I finally got a job offer in the city of my dreams, Portland, Oregon. So in less than two weeks, I was honorably discharged from the military, which was really good because things were starting to get really weird at work. I said what few goodbyes I had left to say, and I packed all of my stuff, and I moved to Portland. As scary as that leap was for me, I can't even really begin to tell you how much it was worth it. I was so happy to be in such an amazing city. <laughs> Sorry, I'm terrible, but that's supposed to be the Portland skyline. It's much prettier in real life. Not long after being in Portland, I had to go to Oklahoma to do some training. And while I was there, I met this really wonderful woman named Celeste, who saw me in all my mid-transition awkwardness, and she gave me that final little bit of support I needed to find the courage to transition to full time. I also met a pretty rad chick in Oklahoma named Presley, who quickly became my best friend and supported me through the change. And when I returned to Portland, I returned to Shannon, and I haven't looked back since, and I haven't been happier. I can't even really begin to tell you how happy I am now. I have met so many amazing people, like Katie and Mark, and so many more that have truly enriched my life. And today I'm happy. Today I get to laugh and I get to smile. Today I get to be myself. So just remember, no matter how tough things are right now, happiness is waiting for you. You just have to find the courage to go after it. I hope that was worth the wait. There is uh, the first 30 years of my life crammed into 12 minutes. I hope that you were able to gain some insight into who I am and where I came from. I hope you're able to relate a little bit to that. And um, I hope that in the future, we can continue to build on this. In fact, speaking of the future, my next episode is going to be a helping you find a job. I know as a transgender person, that is something we all struggle with at one point or another. So we'll be talking about that. So please stay tuned. Um, comments, questions, always welcome. I really want to know what you want to talk about. So please leave me some comments about future episodes. It'll really help me build meaningful content for you. And as always, please subscribe. And until next time, stay strong and stay true to you.